All right, so today I'm doing a video on the Wise Robotic Vacuum. Um, and as you guys probably know by now, robotic vacuums are one of my favorite things to review and shoot videos on. Uh, this one is particularly fun because it has the LiDAR system, which is basically a spinning camera that'll map your entire house. So some of the pros on this actually revolve, no pun intended, around this LiDAR camera. And what I really like is there's a mapping feature and I have on this level about 1200 square feet in our house. And this thing will map it in about nine minutes, which is really, really quick. So as things change, if you move furniture around, uh, you put up decorations, take them down, whatever it may be, you just hit that button and it'll map your house. So that's a really great feature and a lot of other vacuums don't have that especially at this price point. So I spent $200 on this. Uh, typically it goes for about $330, uh, but it's been on sale lately for $200, which is a fantastic deal for any vacuum with a LiDAR system. So what I like about this in particular is after it's done mapping your house, you can label rooms in your house, which is awesome. Um, and in future state, you'll be able to tell your smart connected devices um, that, hey, I want you to go clean the boys' bedroom or the guest bedroom or go clean the kitchen and it'll just go clean that area that you pre-mapped and pre-named and then it'll go back and charge. So you're not having to clean the whole house every time you run this, which is a great, great feature. My other vacuum did do the mapping of the house, but it would get lost. So if I were to pick up the vacuum and move it, it would get lost and have to start completely over. Uh, which is a huge pain if you have kids or things on the ground that it might get stuck on. Those cheaper vacuums will get stuck. You'll pick them up and when you set them down, they're basically starting their map all the way over. This one doesn't do that. This one I've had stuck multiple times on things that the kids have left out around the house. And I'm able to just pick it up, clean out whatever obstruction there is. I could even move it to a different room and it'll take about 10 seconds to kind of figure out where it is. It'll kind of spin. Um, and the slider will kick in to identify which room it's in and it'll pick right back up on the mapping. Uh, so I would say that's going to save time so this isn't running as often, which means, you know, it's less noise in your house when you're home and also less wear and tear on the vacuum, which is a good thing for longevity. Um, that being said, the mapping isn't perfect. So a lot of homes, and mine included, have kind of an island, is the best way to put it, of interior walls in the home. And the first five times I mapped, it would not see that as an interior wall, which meant as I was separating rooms, I could not draw lines from an exterior wall to that interior wall, which meant the mapping was kind of goofy. I did some research on the WISE forums, and they said basically just close one of your doors to block it off and it'll somehow magically map it correctly. Uh, so on the sixth try of mapping my house, I just closed one of the interior doors and it mapped it beautifully. So that's you know one possible improvement for WISE uh, down the road is to maybe make that uh, line drawing feature a little bit easier. All right, so now this is the WISE app, which I am a really big fan of. Um, one of the big benefits you get, maybe even the biggest benefit of the LiDAR system is it does map your house and you can split up the rooms. One of the limitations are, um, like for instance, here in the center part of our house, I can't draw lines to go in between the inside of a, a room wall and the exterior wall. So kind of as a, a little image here, if I want to do a customized room and I want to say split this master bedroom, I can't draw this to stop at one of these interior walls. It wants to snap to one of the exterior walls, um, which for my case, it would be really handy. And I've read this on the forums as well. A lot of other people say this would be um, something they would like to see that you can do. And I guess there's ways to trick it by closing certain doors off and trying to remap. Um, but you really shouldn't have to do that, in my opinion. Um, another thing that is really neat, and this is one of the best features, I think, of this app, and that is the no-go zones. So that is, you know, basically the areas that you don't want the vacuum to go. And I have a bunch of them set up. 
I've got one where a Christmas tree is, and the atom is very simple. Um, so here, I don't want it to go into this closet. So what I'm going to do is just do a little bit of a no-go zone right where this closet is. Hit OK, and now that vacuum will not go there. So these are like virtual walls or no-go zones, as Wise calls them. Um, the other thing that is awesome is most vacuums have only the ability to just clean the entire house. So you hit the, the go button and it cleans the whole house. And a lot of times that's not necessary. So like in our house, um, like our front door area, our kitchen and our dining room are the most trafficked areas that probably have the most debris on a given day that would need to be cleaned up. So I find myself with this vacuum not even cleaning the majority of the house. I'll just do certain rooms, and you can also set schedules um, to clean certain rooms at certain times. And the best part is you can even clean certain suction levels. Um, so if you know the front door, for instance, always has a lot of dirt that's kind of hard to pick up, you could set that on a maximum suction. And then say the dining room at like a lower suction. Um, so that's just kind of what the app looks like. And it's kind of neat too that over here, it shows where the WiseVac is in yellow, and it shows it's charging and it's connected, all just from this map view. Um, also down at the bottom, you get uh, the percentage that it's charged. And we'll go ahead and unselect these rooms. Um, so the last charge cycle, or the last running cycle was 27 square feet, and it took it six minutes. Um, and then within the settings, you can go into cleaning history. That's actually kind of cool because it'll give you a little bit of a video playback. So there it just cleaned uh, the kitchen and it wasn't uh, too intensive a cleaning. And you can go into device info, it'll run updates, you can rename it. Um, and eventually, so as of December of 2021, this does not have Alexa enabled yet, but that is supposedly coming soon. Um, so, you know, the thought there is our vacuum's name is Wally. You can say, Wally, clean the front door, clean the dining room, and just by your voice command, we'll be able to do those cleaning s sessions for you. Um, the next thing is, is this has three suction levels, which is awesome. And it actually does a very good job on the suction on the lowest level on the quiet mode. Um, it still picks up just about everything, which is great. And a big part of that is because of this brush system on the bottom. It has both a rubber brush as well as a bristle brush. And I've had many vacuums over the years. Um, and, you know, some of them that are, you know, just the rubber brushes don't always pick up as well. So like the kids will drop, you know, for instance, uh, oatmeal flakes, dry oatmeal. And for some reason, it will not, most vacuums will not pick that up. It just spits it out the back. It's too light and it's too flat. This one will pick it up every time. And I think it's a combination of the bristle brush with that rubber brush. Not to mention it has, you know, a pretty good suction quality all on its own. The other thing I really like is the first Roomba I had bumped in the walls and furniture. And I mean, it didn't just bump. It would hit it, twist and kind of grind and scratch at, you know, like your quarter round trim on your ground, your furniture. So I was going around with a touch up pen and trying to touch up, you know, as it was wrecking things. This doesn't do that. So as this is going through your house, when you start a cleaning cycle, it goes around the perimeter of your house and then it does the lines. As it's doing that, it's not really bumping into things. It's really cool to watch it. It actually keeps a very good perimeter and it has this side brush that's going and scooping up dirt underneath your trim and around your furniture. So it really doesn't have to bump into it. So it's using this LiDAR and it also has this little camera on the front. Um, so after it's done all its mapping and it's using its sensors, it knows not to bump into stuff, which is awesome. So good longevity on the vacuum by being able to map and select certain rooms, but also good longevity on the furniture around your home in being able to identify where everything is and not banging into it, which is just awesome. Another thing too is with WISE, all the products I have between, you know, cameras, a scale, the headphones, this, 
So WISE does a good job of updating things, which is awesome. So I like to see that as a consumer and knowing that they're making improvements and that this product is still relevant. Um, we've been now maybe about nine months without an update and there are a few things that you know could generally be improved, but overall it works great. Um, the other thing I like is with all my vacuums, I can't tell you how often I've lost the brushes, the cleaning brushes. This, they put it right into the vacuum, so you can't really lose it. That's awesome. Another thing I really like is this is really easy to remove, this dust bin. Um, you know, so for cleaning and everything, it's, it's very, very simple. Um, the other thing I like is it has just two buttons on the top, which make this really, really easy. They're rubberized, have a good feel to them. You have a power button and a home button. So if you know you don't want to go into an app or this is for someone that's maybe a little bit older, all they have to do is you know hit the power button, start cleaning, hit the home button if they want to stop it, and you know it's very easy. So they've made it relevant for both um, you know, maybe your younger crowd that's good with technology, as well as maybe your older crowd that doesn't want to mess around with smartphones and having to set this up, you can just hit the go button and it'll go. Um, as it docks itself, it does a little dance and it spins and it goes into the charging cable or into the charging dock. And that's one con of this is it doesn't hit it every time. Um, I'd say about 75% of the time, it takes it two tries to get itself docked and charging. Not really a big deal. starting to charge. So the biggest con with this is its size, in my opinion. I've had other vacuums that can go under this couch, some of my other furniture, under our table and chairs without a problem. And this one would be able to do that. So one of its best features is the LiDAR, but it's also a feature that kind of hinders this vacuum. This LiDAR sticks up you know, maybe about a half to three quarters of an inch, which is just enough to make it where it doesn't want to go under everything. So under my couch right now, I actually have dust bunnies and all sorts of gunk. Under my kitchen chairs, it actually rubs on the wood. So when it's done cleaning under those chairs, this actually has kind of like sawdust almost sitting on it from where it's grinding on the bottom of those chairs, which I'm not a big fan of. Um, not a deal breaker, but again, that's just something to consider that you you know, you may have to go under with a Swiffer or something, you know, to clean those, which isn't the case in some of my other vacuums. Um, the other thing that I'm not a big fan of is the sound. And this is kind of generally true with all robotic vacuums. My iLife vacuums are probably the quietest. We can run those while we're at home and, you know, really don't bug us at all. This, even on the quiet setting, is a little difficult to watch movies with. Um, you definitely have to kind of crank the volume up more than you normally would and conversations might be a little bit hindered while while it's running and that's even on the quiet mode so this one is just it's not as quiet as some it's also not as loud as some so like the Roombas I would consider kind of more on the, the loud end of the spectrum this is kind of somewhere between um, you know so that's that's something to consider as well So all in all, I've been a huge fan of this vacuum. At the $330 price point, you know, I think it's a fair, a fair price. 
at $200, I really do think it's a steal for what you get with this. So I would definitely 100% recommend this at $200. At $330, you may wanna search around on Amazon. I know they have some, some less expensive options that may do a lot of the same stuff. The LiDAR is definitely the biggest selling point to this whole thing. Um, and it's just very user-friendly, right out of the box. Um, very easy to set up. Some of the less expensive robots after time just kind of lose their connection to your Wi-Fi and lose the settings. So I've had others that, you know, maybe every six months they lose their connection, which means you're losing maps, you're losing your percentage of life on your components. Uh, just basically resets everything. And with this, I've not had that issue so far, even though I've only had it a month. I have a very strong feeling that that won't be an issue with WISE. So very much appreciate you watching the videos. I hope this was informative for you. And definitely if you can snag one of these for around the $200 price point, I would do it and not even think about it. So thanks for watching. Have a great day and we'll see you in the next video.